Hey friends, and welcome to Gardening with Creekside. And today we're calling it Plants and Projects. That was Jerry's idea. I liked it very much. So that is what we're gonna go with today. We're gonna give you some update on projects. We're gonna talk about plants. We have got a gorgeous uh, fall planting near the nursery at the creek. If you were watching the other day when I was working up there at the sign bed and I was like, man, I'm ready to rip out all the annuals and fill it with mums. So <laughs> that is what Cece and Randy did yesterday. It is stunning. It is gorgeous. So we're gonna show you that. We're going to take a little peek see over there at the shrub lot, the production shrub lot, because just standing here, you know, I don't know, 100 yards, something plus away, I can see uh, shrubs that are showing some gorgeous color, and I'm very interested in what those are, and I want to share them with you. So we're going to do plants and projects. Projects, well, of course, here we are back up at production with the new production greenhouse. We've been here multiple times in this past couple of weeks getting this area ready, so if you're new, here we have a 90 by 96 greenhouse that the sole purpose will be for production. This is not retail space. Uh, we've had some people ask if they could come visit, you know, this greenhouse. No, this is just production only. And we are expanding. This is actually, um, there's three bays. It's a gutter connected greenhouse from our friends at Atlas Greenhouses in Georgia. That is where we get all of our greenhouses from. And so this single greenhouse is going to more than double our growing capacity. So why do we need to have more room? Well, we're going to fight off some yellow jackets while we have a video. Um, we need to have more space because, of course, come next spring, we will be selling annuals and perennials online. If you're not familiar with the yellow jacket dance, this is what we do. You do the dance and you, you move and groove. Um, so because we're going to be offering annuals and perennials online uh, in the spring, so we need to have production room for those. As the gardens grow here at Creekside Nursery, uh, we grow our own plants for those gardens, so we need more room that way. Last year, we were at max capacity in our greenhouses, and um, because of course we have the retail garden center, so we need more room to produce more plants for you fabulous folks. That is what this space is going to be for. Um, not a whole lot has changed as far as like the structure of it since we were here last when they poured the concrete. It was only last week that our friends, um, the Parkers, uh, they came in and laid the concrete. So we did the first bay, of course, as you remember, solid concrete, and then we just did the sidewalks um, and the paths in the other two bays. But you will notice that there is not nearly as much red clay showing right now. That is because my husband uh, has been working his little honey off the past couple of days, trying to get all of the logistics and the inner workings of the greenhouse prepped for when Roger and the boys come back um, Monday. And in fact, Jerry is mic'd up because there's a lot of technical stuff in here and he knows a lot better than I do um, what he did. So I am going to do my best and then he can chime in and he can give his commentary on <laughs> this as well. So we have had um, several people ask about and this is kind of an ongoing question as far as why we don't have, why do we grow straight on the ground? Why don't we use tables in production? And it really is like a space issue. Whenever you go to these big nurseries, Spring Meadow that does all the proven winter color choice shrubs, uh, Pleasant View Gardens, that's one of the homes of all the annuals, they grow straight on the ground. That is because you can get the maximum use out of your space. That is what we do as well washed stone uh jerry we'll we'll pan back here for just for a second this uh this pile back here of gravel is way smaller than it was yesterday morning 90 tons of gravel you said yeah it was about 90 tons five trucks big and big big so trucks. that's probably a truck and a part of another one left right there yes so we've moved in probably a good number of a lot of a yeah, lot of gravel a lot of gravel and so this is what we call washed gravel so you will see it is just simply stone there's no there's no fines in there there's no little small particles relatively these are all the same size 
grade of a stone and so we do that so that the water will drain straight down and then you created a water channel i did straight down the center of each of these bays yeah yeah we took the trencher started at the back and created it deeper in the back because that's where the pipe is yep and then just graded up as we got to where you're standing right, right. now. So the trench, the drain trench here is relatively shallow. It's pretty short. I would yeah, say yeah, shallow, shallow short. right? <laughs> and then as you go back, it gets yeah. deeper because yeah. we want gravity, yeah. right? To work yeah. the water out. And so that is for both of these, well, uh, all, one, all the way, yeah, all the way Yeah, and the very last one on the very end, you know, that's opened. Yes. So the water is going to just drain naturally out. Naturally drain out that way naturally anyway. drain out the side. Yes. And then, okay, so then let's come back here because I do see some um, some red clay back here. And we're trying, Jerry did, tried really, really hard to keep the concrete uh, clean. And so that's why he has the um, plywood because as he was going from red clay over here, he tried to use that. Because if you're not familiar with red clay, once you get red clay on concrete, yes. you're done for. It's yeah. stained. I mean, you There's can- There's gonna be some. And it's gonna be some, but of course you're, you're trying to keep it neat and tidy. But um, I think Rosie walked through here, somebody walked through here uh, with their little muddy paws. And so the likelihood of ever truly getting that out of the concrete is pretty slim. Um, so then this, Jerry, you have a trench here because this is for the conduit. You're going to put conduit for electrical. Conduit for electrical. That's just, it's kind of preliminary, but I, had, I just went ahead and did it. Yeah. And we have that pipe. Right. That's down So there. you can see this is, it's, the pipe is actually a, a very large, white, slick PVC. Yeah. But he covered the ends with yellow duct tape to keep the soil out. And then he did this before the concrete was laid and it ends up right here. Yeah. So that way he can shoot electrical through here, gas, and there are multiple of these all the way down that he can access. Um, so that way we're not <laughs> messing up the pretty, the pretty concrete. So doing all that because you're thinking that electrical, you're gonna run it up the pole. Yeah, we're gonna have conduit up there for right. all electric. It's right. gonna be at the top. Yes. But you're going to wait until basically Roger and the boys are done. I am because you just really never know how all this thing's going to shake down the back wall. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, oh, okay. Let's talk about drainage because if you <laughs> construction, y'all, there's so many different gazillion parts of construction, whether it's a house, uh, any kind of building, greenhouse for sure. So you and Jackson yesterday mm -hmm. were working back here on the back because you already have an existing, before they laid the concrete, um, you and Andrew installed a French drain running. It's kind of the same idea. The well, we went ahead and put the pipe in the trench on this one. So it okay. just drains into the pipe. So we, that way we have something to connect to over here. Right. And then basically down through here, or just created a massive gravel basin for water. Okay, so it's like this big old basin for uh, yeah. of that washed stone because when remember when we did the the drainage at the house with the driveway, and we filled it right. This is that same concept. Yeah. We filled it with washed stone because our driveway we had French drains that got clogged up, and so we ripped all that out. Gosh, it was a year maybe a year ago, um, and then use this same method of the wash stone and the water just flows right through it. It works amazingly yeah, well. Yeah, I did put a pipe on the bottom. Yeah. And then just to, cause a we- A perforated were, black yeah, pipe. Yeah, cause we were able to, on the far corner down there, we had an old, even with all the extra dirt that they added. Yep. We were able to take the excavator and find an old pipe and connect to it. Right, so it was way down there. They've, they've, they've has since covered it up. But so at the bottom of this trench right here, they have that black corrugated perforated um, pipe that's down here and then the gravel on top. And you're gonna fill in like yeah, just kind of when like it's time. Right there behind you, it'll kind of look like that. Yeah, it'll look like this, but right now he's gotta leave access for his, the conduit and everything. So once all that's taken care of, they'll come back in. We're not gonna leave this massive, you know, 
trench right here uh, for sure. So, there went a shovel. Um, it's yeah, a little windy today. It is a little windy. It's not good for hair when you're out here trying to film a video. All right. This is why I wear hats all the time. All right, here we go. Now, projects, this one complete as far as the update goes. Now, let's talk about flowers and plants because tis the season for planting. Here in North Carolina in the South, we are of course a zone 7B and it is, man, it is like primo time to be planting your, your shrubs, your trees, your perennials. It is go time for sure. So I mean, why, why is that? You know? Why is that? Well, let's talk about I mean, that. Do what? you want to talk about that or you want me to talk about that? You can talk about it since you're in front of the camera. I can hold the camera and you can talk about it. I don't think he likes that idea. Okay. So why do we plant in the fall? So we just talked about this in, um, I think the last video, a couple of things. Okay. Your soil temperature is still quite warm, it's quite toasty, right? So you put your plant in the ground, soil is still nice and warm, but the air temperature is cooler. Hopefully you'll get more frequent rain than you do in the summertime. The plants are beginning to enter into dormancy. For example, let's look right here at these hydrangeas. Now these hydrangeas are not primo. You may look at this limelight prime and you're like, oh my gosh, it's sick and looks terrible. No, she's entering into dormancy. Going into dormancy means that they take all of the energy that they've been putting into their top growth all summer long and they start to take that energy away from the top growth and they're sending it down into their roots. And so all winter long, all fall, winter, early spring, you don't see any action up top. All the action is happening in the ground and your root systems are getting very well established and very, very happy. So when it comes time in the spring, heat of the summer, you've got really nice established shrubs and you've got beautiful, beautiful foliage up top. As a viewer said, I love this. They said, because I always say like, if you have happy roots, you have a happy plant. They said, happy roots, happy shoots. So that is why we plant in the fall. There's less transplant shock on the plant. Um, and it's just overall much, much better on the plant and you as the gardener to get them in the ground, get them established before the summer heat hits. That's what we have to worry about here in the South. We don't worry about our winters being too cold we worry about our summers being too hot and plants being under too much stress in the summertime as opposed to the wintertime. So there you go. Um, okay, here we go. I'll did tell you I, another did thing, I explain not to that get, well? Yes, and not to get aggravated with us over when we come to your home and plant shrubs an inch above the soil line. Right. So we do, we have to do that. So we call, there is, it's called the bathtub effect. Um, so you can go look it up, right? Bathtub effect as far as the plants. We have thick, heavy, red clay soil, like right, right? And so when you plant your plants, either even with the soil or below the soil, and you put soil up around the crown of the plant, in the winter time, when we get our rains, that water sits and collects on the top of the root ball around the crown of the plant and it rots and it dies. You don't want that. <laughs> we have to plant our trees, shrubs, um, even some perennials up about at least an inch above the ground. So that means when I have this um, Perfecto Mundo Azalea, okay? Well, I'm not even mm. It is, great. All right, so I'm trying to hold this here. Ooh, easy, Sorry, easy. I know, well, all right, so let's just pretend for demonstration's sake that the soil right here is right up here. You want your native soil to be about right here. Do not bring your native soil all the way up. Do not plant this too deep. Bring it to right here so you're going to have this much of your root ball sticking above the ground. You, of course, can come back with your pine needles or your mulch and kind of shore it up so they don't look like they're like floating out there but the water will shed away. You still got all those massive roots in contact with the soil, but water is going to shed and not drown your plant. Correct. Okay. All right, these are the Perfecto Mundos. <laughs> these are the reblooming azaleas from Proven Winners. Um, Y'all have been grabbing these up like crazy because we did have a ton of them and I'm seeing less and less, but this is the double purple, which is of course that beautiful 
a classic in my brain azalea color we get a lot of these even the old timey azaleas have this color palette to them but it is a double flower the perfecto mundos are hardy in zones 6b to 9 and they're going to be much more petite than those old traditional ones so two and a half to three feet tall three to four wide and full full sun they will rebloom three times in the season look at this sweet little thing right here let me get this for you. I think this is pink carpet. Let me find my tag. And I say that. It's double no, pink. it's double pink. Okay. So double pink is a very nice petite flower on it. And you can see that it has been blooming for a while because it's got some of the older blooms on it. Um, but it too is going to be, um, it's only two to three tall and wide, right? Um, so such a sweet, sweet one. And of course your azaleas are evergreens. So that is incredibly nice that they are evergreens. Oh, let's come down here. Oh, right, look those here, are mine. Babe. Never mind. <laughs> I was I'm gonna hit that. I was like, oh look at those down there. But those are mine for the signature garden. So you can <laughs> you can't look at those. I mean you can't look at them, you just can't have them. All right, here we go. I am not gonna pick this one up because I've got a precious honeybee, which demonstrates we've got multiples. Now those are honeybees. We like honeybees. It's the yellow jackets that are evil little things. I mean, you can tell the difference because honeybees are more furry. Um, so, Caryopteris Beyond Pink. These are ones that we are growing, grew this season, and y'all, they are gorgeous. This is the time of year where your Caryopteris are going to bloom. Um, and it might be just, a, these might be a little bit later. Mine and the berm were in full glory probably about a month ago. But this is the perfect shrub if you have a very sunny, a very dry area, a very hot area, that you just need something that is no fuss, no maintenance, this is the plant for you. Now, it is clearly a pollinator attractor. Pollinators of all sizes, shapes, and species love this plant. It is gonna be for the Southern Garden, 7B to 9. So even me, as a 7B, I definitely wanna put this in the hottest part of my garden and try to give it some winter protection. So if you can get it um, where maybe there's a tree block in front of it, so it protects it from cold winter winds, do not let this thing be wet. Do not let it sit in wet soil. It will rot in the wintertime. It likes it dry. Two and a half feet tall and wide. Mine and the berm were just massive and gorgeous. And they are a late summer, early fall bloomer again. The only thing that you're gonna do as far as maintenance on this guy is nothing right now, wait. Wait until early spring, you're coming out of winter, early spring, and you cut it back hard. And when I say hard, I mean you only want maybe this much of the plant. You're just gonna whack it down to the ground and then it will reflush. So just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant um, for that, especially that late season garden is beautiful. All right, let's come down here. These are all steady as she goes, I believe. Yep, they are. Steady as she goes, gardenias. We do love them. And even though here we are in, you know, mid to latish um, October, this thing is still blooming. Just glorious. So steady as she goes is a double gardenia bloom that smells divine. Absolutely. Love, love gardenias for sure. Hydrangeas. Again, don't let this freak you out. Do not let this puffer fish, and she's naked, right? I mean, she's basically lost all of her leaves. She's looking rough, but yet we still have new buds coming out. Now is the perfect time. If you were in the South, it is the perfect time to plant hydrangeas. Don't be a fool like me and plant gorgeous puffer fish in July and August. They're not going to do well. You plant them now, and they will be stunning all throughout the year. Um, summer you know what I mean um, so we've got those we'll get down to the other ones here in a minute look is this um, that's a signature garden never mind signature garden plants but that is Ooh, little, I, I saved your plants you did but that is little lime punch right it is yeah so little lime punch 
Um, yeah, these are going into the signature garden. Love them. Look how nice and stocky these plants are. They are just, we've got a big old fat grasshopper on there. Um, gorgeous plants. So we have little lime punches. And then of course, because it is October, candy corn. So this is double play candy corn spirea. Um, these are still growing. Obviously, this is why they're up here on the production lot and not down there at the nursery because we're trying to get them bigger before we take them out onto um, the retail lot. But look at that color. This is, this is the perfect plant though for this time of year with that beautiful new foliage on it, gorgeous color. And the candy corns, like all the other double place spireas, do great, beautiful flowers on them. And this is going to be kind of like a, a raspberry color of a bloom on that. Blooms on new growth, they are sterile, so they just keep producing uh, flowers all season long. Hardy in zones four to seven. So even in a zone seven B, we have had great success with all of the double play spireas. This is where next door, we have the new one, Dolly. Um, that's where we say that gardening is like an experiment because you're constantly, the tag says zone seven, we're a seven B, but man, they handle our climate like a champ. I have, um, who is she? Who's that spirea I have by the Incredibles that we love so much? Double Do play doozy. Doozy. Sorry. Sorry, doozy. Um, full, full, full sun, and she does great. So Dolly is new this year. Double play Dolly. Reminds me of candy corn as far as the color, but the leaves seem to be a little bit smaller, not quite as bright. Still have that really nice purple uh, flower on it. Amazing, they bloom on new growth, so at the end of the winter, you just whack them back and they will flush out and be quite, quite happy for sure. Oh, dripping over plants. All right, let's come on down here because I see pops of color. <laughs> this is... That is our little lime punch. Little lime punches. Or firelight tidbit. Oh, we don't know. Yeah, might be firelight tidbit. Might be firelight tidbit. Or if I mean, um, quick fire fab. Quick fire fab is what quick I mean. Quick fire fab. So quick fire fab, nice and upright, yep. great one. Um, the butterfly bushes, the pugster blues yeah. are still They're doing rocking. quite nice. Okay, down here now. Again, this is why these are up here because they're still on the small side, right? These are not huge right now, but. I was driving by here the other day. I was having to dump some uh, green debris and I saw this color just stand out at me. This is the Barberry, right? So a Barberry, Sunjoy Orange Pillar. And even though they are small right now, my gosh, y'all, the color on these things are popping and they are stunning. So obviously with that name Pillar, you're going to know that it is going to be very columnar, right? It is going to be narrow and tall, three to four tall, but only one and a half to three feet tall, wide. It's lunchtime. <laughs> Jenny's brain's not, all my synapses are not firing quite right. Um, but it is definitely a full sun plant. If you don't have it in full sun, which means five to six hours, you're not going to get this bright color. Hardy in zones four to eight. Again, very, very cold tolerant, does well even in our summer heat. I have three of these in the berm and man, they were taken off and gorgeous. They're right in the center of the bed. Beautiful on those. They are deciduous, okay? It's all right. During those winter months, y'all, if you're in a zone four, I'm thinking you probably got a lot of snow. You wouldn't see these things anyway if they did have leaves on them because they could just be buried in snow. I don't know, I don't live in a zone four, but I'm just, just thinking out loud here. Um, and I took this from somebody. Um, and so they are deciduous and yes they do have thorns barberries have thorns but these are not extremely like i can still rub my hand over it i have felt barberries that are much thornier than this so this is not something that i would say even if you have children because i get people that are like oh but my kids i don't want them like falling into it y'all it's not a rose bush with these massive dagger thorns that's not it at all um the color on these are just stunning. So, all right. oh no, let me show them one thing, one thing. Now this is not, we have Incredibles for sale, but let me give you an example. 
Y'all, we've talked about this before. These are the Incredibles that are going in the Signature Garden. Um, we whacked these big time uh, mid-season. So if you, I didn't even do it at my own house, but if you prune your Incredibles mid-season, so that would be like end of June, first of July, look what you would have right now in October. Beautiful, fresh flowers on your Incredibles, and there's buds all over them. These are gorgeous, and these, bless their little hearts, they're in two gallon containers. They desperately want to get out. But I just have to show you, we've talked about this with panicles and smooth hydrangeas. If you can prune them later on um, in the season, like after they've done their really good flush, and if you can handle not having blooms for a little bit, you're gonna get beautiful fall flowers on them. All right, speaking of fall flowers, let's go down to the entrance to the nursery because I can't wait to show you what Cece and Randy did yesterday. So here we are at the entrance to the nursery, right? So going right across here to the creek, across the creek, over to the nursery. And if you remember, this was the section of the flower bed that was not doing nearly as well as its companion piece across the, across the street. So I, I asked Randy and Cece yesterday, and I was like, can y'all please just go ahead and rip out all the annuals and then just have fun using whatever you want at the nursery uh, to plant this using lots of mums with all that gorgeous color to make a huge impact and statement as people come across and enter into the nursery and man did they deliver now again we've talked about this before right so when you work at a nursery or you own the nursery you know you you try to help out inventory and so you grab plants maybe that are less than desirable for some people and you go ahead and use them in your own gardens and your displays so my girls i think the exact same way i do so that is what they did so we took mums they took mums that are in full bloom or on the very verge of full bloom and they've been sitting here for weeks and nobody's grabbed them so it's fair game um and then just incorporated them i asked i said can we because i love this bright yellow like I'm a huge fan of bright yellow because it makes a big statement from a distance, but I also loved this purple. And so when you put the yellow and the purple beside each other, the purple stands out. If we only did like deep reds or the deep purples or the deep oranges in this bed, they would kind of get lost into the landscape. So when you're doing those colors that contrast really nicely, right? The purples, the whites, the different yellows, they just make each other look even better and pop and look gorgeous. And then they came in front and planted some pansies uh, that maybe were stretching a little bit because they were in the hot greenhouse. Uh, but the, of course, they are great for the landscape. You absolutely can plant them. Now that they're outside in cooler temperatures, they're gonna stop stretching. They're gonna get compact. They're gonna grow and be beautiful. But you can see just using this mass color right here makes such a huge impact. And of course, you know that Jerry and I uh, have our afternoon coffee on the front porch, which is, will pan ever so slightly to kind of give you a perspective of where it is. So the front porch, I mean, the house is just right there. But it's a, I mean, it's, I don't know, 100 yards away from, from this bed. And I'm thinking a football field. Yeah. That's about a football field. Yeah, it's about and 300 feet. More than that? No, yeah. No, okay. Uh, 100, say it was 100 yards. And yesterday, this bed was glowing. Absolutely glowing. Whereas the previous one, because the annuals were just on the struggle bus and they weren't showing really well, right, man, they were gorgeous, were they not? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. beautiful. Um, so, don't be afraid to use you know your mums if you're like me i have absolutely no desire to make these perennials right because this is a display garden here at the nursery we're constantly changing it every year this planting is different i don't want my mums to be perennials i want them to be annuals so that i can always switch it up so if you're in the camp like i am and you want them just to use them as annuals but you want them to look planted just plop them in there i mean it was we didn't amend the soil any because again this is going to be a temporary planting got them in there once either a freeze comes or they're just done depends if we have more mums we can switch them out 
or we can just call it a day for the winter and just clear it out. So it made a huge impact not only in this flower bed, but also the entrance bed that I did the other day. It just makes it bright and cheery. And when you come to the nursery, you're like, oh yeah, it's fall. I don't think there today, especially there's any doubt because it's cool. The leaves are dropping and yeah, so- the leaves are coming down today. They are coming, it's got a <laughs> lovely breeze. And these are, we find too, so these all, all these trees right here are the tulip poplars. They tend to be the ones that kind of go first. Um, yeah. The oaks and the maples haven't really started changing, but the poplars, man, they are dropping and you can see these big trees. These are all the tulip poplars and they are certainly dropping as are the pine needles. So if you have pine trees in the area, uh, I bet you've noticed some needle drop on your, which is totally normal. Don't freak out. They're not dying. It's just what they do. Um, yeah, it's a great time of year. Absolutely love it. All right, Jerry's here. Oh, signature garden. Let's go to the signature garden. I forgot. We're going to give you an update on that. So let's go. All right, so here we are at <laughs> the site of the future Primer Winter Signature Garden. Uh, if you have been following us, you're like, Jenny, not much has changed. I know. We've been a little busy, you know, doing a whole big, massive greenhouse, but coming next week jerry has promised me that next week because all of his business up at the greenhouse is done so when roger and the boys come back next week he can't really work up there so we're going to put all of our attention here at the nursery and this proven winners signature garden so if you're not familiar with what a proven winner signature garden is um it really is a very great honor when proven winners approaches you and says hey would you be interested in doing a signature garden for us uh, they did that, I don't know, a year and a half ago, maybe it was. Um, very excited about that, very honored. And so a Proven Winter Signature Garden is a garden that highlights Proven Winter's plants. It does not have to be 100% Proven Winter's. It just has to have a great representation and really shine and highlight the Proven Winter's plants. Of course, here at Creekside, we will incorporate annuals, perennials, shrubs, and yes, even trees that are proven winners. This is going to be the um, more kind of designed formal area of the signature garden, but it's not going to be confined to this space because we have such incredible different growing opportunities here. So we'll have beds that will be along the creek, all in the nooks. We're going to have a privacy screen in the back. Uh, featuring some of the great evergreen trees from Proven Winters. We have the whole pond area, a whole nature kind of trail that you've never even been up there before. We've never even showed you that, that goes all up in there underneath the grove of trees. So this whole area, um, and as gardens are, they continually develop and grow. This is what that space is going to be. Our main focus right now though, is of course this, the formal area of the signature garden. Um, so I have the plan laid out. It is going to be very linear, uh, very structured in its shape, but not so structured uh, in the planting. We will still have that classic Creekside planting style. And what Jerry and Andrew worked on, gosh, over the last, I don't know, couple of weeks off and on, they brought in some bulk soil just to kind of raise this bed up, this whole area. Because as we talk about here at Creekside Nursery, nothing is ever flat. So we had little divots. We had um, areas that would hold water and we wanted to kind of bring this in as a level ground. So that's why we had the bulk soil. And then Jerry came through, I think, this week or last week, whenever it was, with the tiller and the tractor yeah. and just kind of mixed it in. So you will see that we have the native soil mixed in with that bulk soil just to kind of get it level and even. The next thing on the list is to go ahead, oh, I just lost my gardenia, is to go ahead and draw, uh, string up the lines so we know exactly where the beds are so that we can trench for we're the gonna irrigation. We're going to go ahead and trench first. Trench first. We're gonna, we're gonna, you and I are gonna come out, look at it, kind of get some rough measurements, okay. and kind of take a, because we're gonna run at, at least four separate lines, mm -hmm. or more than that. But it, it, but you know, and then we'll pop up for drip irrigation. Right, right. So everything is gonna be on drip. Um, is we're not gonna have overhead. Um, we just find that that works better in our humid summers and so everything so that's what we're going to do is come in here and trench then once we get those main lines in then we can start to form the beds but 
what I want to do, um, I think my first planting that I want to do is going to be this, whether you want to call it elevated garden, raised beds, whatever, what have you, whatever you want to call it. Oh, because it's a berm. I'll tell you that right now. Do what? It's a berm. It's a berm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Huh. So the main entrance is going to be this path that you see right here. So we will have a stone path that comes through. Like you are definitely going to know that this is an entrance to something special. So coming through here, a little footbridge over, and then the berm, elevated garden, raised beds will be here. We're going to have this um, is definitely going to be very structured in the fact of that we're going to have uh, sprinter boxwoods running down this. Both beds will be planted the exact same. Sprinter boxwoods running down, and then those little lime punch hydrangeas that we saw up there at the nursery uh, production area, then they will be in here as well. So those will be our shrubs, and then on each side, kind of the slope of the berm, then that is where we will put annuals seasonally and so they can change out. This one will be a quote easy one to plant and one that I am ready to kind of plant first and get it in the ground and so I can see it and see how it's going to look. And then, because that's really the only, <laughs> these are the only beds that I really know exactly where plants are going to go. And then we can focus on the rest of the gardens. Of course, you saw us a couple of weeks ago, we came in and installed the unique stone fountain. And so this is the center point. So everything is going to base off of this fountain. It is dead center of this space right here. Um, and so the gardens will, the individual beds will come off of that with pathways. And yes, we're gonna have benches. People were asking, you know, are you gonna have plenty of seating for us if we wanna come and sit and enjoy the gardens? Absolutely. Um, and then also I do know, this is the other thing that I do know, is that around the base of the fountain, we will have a circular flower bed that will hold annuals. So this will be a mass planting probably all the time of the same annual because it makes a huge impact. And then these outer beds will have a curve to them. Um, and then that's where we're going to have four benches here. So you can sit and look around and enjoy and look at the fountain and then and just enjoy being here at the gardens. So I think is that, does that pretty much cover it all? Mm -hmm. It does. Jerry gave me the thumbs up. So that is what is happening now. The great thing I was talking to a customer though this past week and I said, I know it looks like we haven't done much and not a lot of has progressed. But the thing is, is once we turn our attention to this and once we focus on this, it will move quite rapidly and things will happen extremely fast. So that is good in that aspect, but uh, my patience is, it's about done and I'm ready to really address this, get some hard lines, get some plants in the ground because again, I'm practicing what we preach to you. Remember the berm we planted all in November. All those trees and shrubs went in in November and they did amazing this year. So we're entering into the end of October, beginning of November. We're going to do some mass planting and because we have got some gorgeous plants to put in here. So. That is the update on plants and projects here at Creekside Nursery. Of course, we'll keep you updated on all the different things that are happening around here. And we so greatly appreciate all of your love and support. I think that's it for today. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.